Hi, I'm Katie Murray, and right now I'm working on my master's in educational technology. I've been using a lot of technology within my classroom, which is a kindergarten classroom. A lot of people ask me, how do you do that? They don't understand that you can use a lot of technology even in a primary classroom. So today I'm going to tell you how to use technology in the primary classroom, why you need to use it, and the benefits it's going to have for our students in the long run. So first, why change? Why do we need to start integrating technology at such a young age? Well, right now our students go home and they are constantly inundated with multimedia from computers, from video games, from tablets and phones. Everything that's in their face has something to do with technology. And so this is what our students are seeing all the time. And then when we put a book or something that is not as multimedia based in front of them, sometimes they're not as engaged in the curriculum because it's not what they're used to seeing. Um, another reason we need to is right now in almost any job that the, our students are going to enter in the future is going to have some type of technology base in it, whether it's farming or um, retail, any of those use technology nowadays to calculate so many different things within the business side of it. So our students need to know how to be technologically literate and technologically proficient. The third thing is that technology can help us differentiate and individualize our instruction so much more. Right now, in, if you go into any classroom, most teachers are differentiating. They have a low group and a medium group and a high group. But with technology, we're able to even differentiate much more. So you have multiple levels within your low group, multiple levels in your medium group, and multiple levels in your high group. Using technology, we can meet students at their individual level and really give them curriculum that is just geared towards them. David Warlick said, we need technology in every classroom and in every student and every teacher's hand because it is the pen and paper of the time. It is the lens through which our students experience much of the world. So just going, another quote going to say how important it is that we start integrating technology. This is how our kids see the world. And if we're not trying to show or helping them learn things in that same way, it's gonna be a lot harder and a lot less engaging for them. Just a couple of statistics on how much our kids are connected today. Um, 1.3 billion active Facebook accounts currently exist. And within that, five new profiles are created every five seconds, or sorry, every second. So every single second, five new people are signing up for Facebook. This is where our students are. This is what they're doing all the time is getting on Facebook, even at a young age. Um, I know several kindergartners who have Facebook accounts and they know how to use it. The second statistic has to do with Twitter, which is another popular social media, and 6,000 tweets are made per second um, based off the Twitter statistics. So this is where our students are, this is how they're engaging with their world, how they're learning, how they're um, expressing themselves, and this is what we need to tie into and tie into our educational system. Um, DigiEd did a study, they have lots of teachers that are already integrating technology and they surveyed their teachers and found that 92% re recorded um, increased student engagement. So our students are more excited to learn the curriculum, they're more engaged in it, they're not checking out as quickly when we use technology. They also found that 82% um, thought that the teaching experience was overall a better teaching experience. So not only were the students more engaged, but the teachers were more engaged and more excited about the curriculum. They felt like they were providing better teaching for their students. So that's another positive benefit. And the second one says that, or the third one says that 90% had a positive effect on student participation. So the students are more engaged, they're participating more, they're sharing more, which is just what we need, especially for those EL learners and for those low level learners. The more participation that we can get them, the more language that we can elicit from them, the better it's gonna be. So now I'm going to get a little bit into how we can actually use technology within your instruction. Um, so this is not really what the students are doing yet. This is what can you do as a teacher to provide that multimedia rich instruction. When um, videos first started back in 1913, Thomas Edison said, books will soon be obsolete in schools. 
Scholars will be instructed through the eye and our system will completely be changed within the next 10 years. Well, fast forward 100 years down the line and there are some big changes that have taken place in education, that's for sure, but we are not fully instructing through all the different venues that we can yet. And so we really need to take heed of what Thomas Edison said and start instructing not only through the ways that we had in the past, but start instructing in different ways and especially engaging the, the multimedia rich curriculum that we could have for our students. So there's one um, online site called Discovery Streaming and it's through um, Discovery Kids or Discovery Education where you can go online and you can make a teacher account and they have hundreds and hundreds of videos at every single level for your students. I've used videos with my second graders based off um, writing and how to structure writing pieces. I've used videos with my kindergartners uh, that show all the different animal growth stages. I've used videos with fourth graders that talk about um, coming over and the Oregon Trail and all of the Gold Rush thing. This is an incredibly valuable resource for teachers and it really helps you to engage your students a lot more and to reinforce that curriculum in yet another way to help deepen their thinking. Um, the other really cool thing about this website is that they have lesson plans and worksheets um, that you can go on as a teacher and you can use those coupled with those videos to even extend the curriculum further. The next one is also a video site. It's Brain Pop, and they also have Brain Pop Junior. Um, Brain Pop is geared towards the upper grades, third through sixth, or even a little bit higher. And then Brain Pop Junior is geared more K2, K3. Um, and what they do is they have these fun little characters, Annie and Moby, and they help talk about different things. The really great part about this is these videos are all only about five minutes but they do a great job of really explaining using lots of visual um, pieces for the students and they make it fun and exciting for them. I often use these either as a opening or a closing for my lessons because the students, it either hooks them into my lesson or it helps wrap up everything that we've been talking about in the lesson. So these I use very often daily, at least weekly within my classroom, depending on what topic we're doing. Um, this also covers all the ranges of um, subject areas, so they have math videos, social studies, science, um, anything that you can really think of, you can go online and most of the time they have a video on it. The next one that you can use for teacher instruction is called Padlet. The way Padlet works is you go online and you set up a screen and you just pose a question at the top. The great thing about this is you do not need logins, which especially for primary teachers, that is golden. Anytime our kids don't have to remember what the login is, <coughs> excuse me, it's really great because you don't have to have little stickers or little stars that have all their login information. So this one doesn't have a login, you don't even need one as a teacher. You go on, you create the, the page and pose a question at the top. So this one was about, um, I'm doing a project where we're connecting with other schools, so the schools are going on and they're posting where their classroom is. I've used it as an introduction where my kids, I just say something like, what's your favorite animal during our animal unit? And the students go online and they type what their favorite animal is. Um, you can use it as a ticket out the door, a check for understanding. It's a great thing because all of a sudden you see them pop up with their names and all the kids are able to really see what everybody else was thinking and what they were saying. The other great thing about this is it gives every child in your classroom a voice. So if you do some sharing, a lot of times only maybe five, six kids get to share. When you do Padlet, every single student is getting to share and every single student is popping up on the board for all the other students to see. So this is great for those ones that are a little too shy to really vocalize, um, but they're still getting the practice with the language. For the primary kids, usually I focus it to just one or two words um, where they're answering. So what's your favorite animal? They only have to type one word. For the upper grade students, you could incorporate a lot more um, and having them type full sentences. It really depends on where your students are, but that's the great thing is you can use this even down in kindergarten. 
next one that I really like is called Edge of Creations. This one is one of my daily go-tos for math. Um, the way Edge of Creations works is it's an application that you can put on an iPhone or a tablet. And once you have it on there, it hooks into your computer and your projector. And you're able to walk around the classroom and essentially have a mobile whiteboard. This is so valuable because instead of me being tied up underneath the document camera or up at the board, I'm standing over next to all my students who really need that extra support. And I'm also able to circulate the room and kind of check for understanding and see where all my kids are doing and how they're understanding the curriculum. The other great thing about this is, well, there's a, a lot of great things, but one of the things that I love is the students are really motivated because as I'm walking around the classroom with my iPad, I can hand it to them and they're able to um, put their problem up on the board and all of a sudden it's right there. They love being able to take the, the iPad and write on it and have their work be shown. So it's another great motivator for those kids who might not be quite as motivated. Um, the, another thing that I really like about this is you can either take pictures or you can draw pictures in or you can insert pictures from the internet. So when we're studying about plants, I can take a picture of the plant and they, I can have the kids label it. We could draw a picture of a plant and the kids can label it. Or let's say I really don't want to take the time to do that. I can just pop online real quick, pull up a picture of a flower, input it, and then the kids can label it from there. So it's excellent for um, visual stimulation for your students. And like you can see here, we were using it for um, building numbers with money. Okay, so this might be more like second grade. In kindergarten, you wouldn't see this quite yet, but I have used it for countless things in any kind of subject that you think of. Um, but like I said, this is one of my favorites for math because as we're doing the math problems, then I can really circulate and the kids can solve them for me as we're walking around. And all of it's put up on the board without me being tied up there. So that kind of had to do with this, the instruction side of it. Now I'm going to get into, okay, you've taught some curriculum and now you want your students to show their knowledge. You want them to make some type of project to prove to you what they learned. So these are a few of my favorites um, that we've used for student projects. The first one is Book Creator. Book Creator is an app for a tablet. Um, I think they also have a online part two but the students can go on and they can create books in any topic using drawing, pictures, text, um, and the great thing is they can even voice record what they wanna say. So let's say your kindergartners can't type in there yet or don't know how to write very much yet. You can show them how to put the little voice recorder button in and they can narrate their picture that they told. Um, so in the beginning of the year, I often have my students narrate their pictures and then as we move on, they start typing one word to maybe label, or then they can start actually typing sentences towards the end of the year. Um, this is great for writing books, whether they're doing narrative books, um, how-to books, personal books, whatever kind of book you want them to create. Using this in writing, they love the idea that there's, their book actually starts to look like a real book that you could go online and see. And you can even send them to your parents when you're done, um, if your parents have an email address, or you could post them onto a classroom website if you had them. So the students love to show off and share. This is also one where you can take pictures, you can input pictures from online, or the kids can draw their pictures. And then um, when it comes to the text, the students can use the little text button and type it in, or they could just use their finger and write whatever they were trying to write. Now, in kinder, you have to know that a lot of the spelling isn't going to be correct anywhere in primary, but um, that's okay. It, we're seeing exactly what we would see with our writing when kids are doing it um, pen and paper, too.